Hi, I'm Dr. Keith Giaquinto, and I'm here with one of my patients, Matthew McMahon. And the purpose for why we're doing this video is, number one, is to share his story, which I found pretty fascinating, as that he has now completed his fourth 100-mile running event. He did two last summer, and he did two this summer. So we're going to get into the details of his training, the experience of the run, and recovery afterwards. But more importantly, that I'm really fascinated with was what a year's worth of chiropractic care and enzyme nutrition and juice plus and supplementation has done to strengthen his body, to enhance his performance and his experience, and also decrease the recovery time, which is what we're going to get into. Okay. So Matthew, what first got you into running? So I first got into running because uh, at that point, I had really gotten out of shape, and so I was looking for an exercise that I could do anywhere and um, just do on a daily basis to help bring my fitness level back uh, to a better level. And when I say that my fitness was not at a great level, I was uh, around 315 pounds at this point, so I had a very sedentary lifestyle. So I first started walking, of course, but the goal was to eventually start running. Gotcha. And what, how long have you been running now? It's been what, I think three years you said? Yes, this has now been uh, the third year. We just passed the anniversary for the third year. Yes. Gotcha. So how did you find out about 100 mile miles? Because a lot of times people know about 5Ks, warrior dashes, tough mutters, marathons, but like I never known anyone that actually ran like a hundred miles. So well, originally when I was first starting the fitness journey, I had really been fascinated by the idea of running a marathon. So the goal was to run a marathon, um, and before I even started walking, I wanted to have something to work towards that wasn't necessarily tied to weight and that was tied to an achievement. So I wrote down, I want to complete a marathon. And then as I was training for the marathon, uh, when things started to shut down in 2020 for the pandemic and so on, there was a group that uh, created a, a, a challenge and you could run different race levels. So you could run a 5K, a 10K, an 8K, a 15K, a half marathon and a marathon. And then I noticed that there was this badge that you could earn that said ultra ultra marathon and I was really fascinated by that because being achievement oriented I wanted to get all the badges well sure <laughs> but then I was like what's an ultra and so then uh, you asked in the group and people were explaining well an ultra is usually it's past a marathon and usually that's around a 50k and so um, then some people were like and sometimes people run 50 miles and 100 miles and then somewhere around the same time, I had heard of um, this inspirational uh, speaker, uh, David Goggins, who has done a lot of runs. Sure. And he had run a 100 miler. And he's also run a 200 miler as well. But anyways, all these different areas were bringing up ultras and 100 milers. And that really piqued my fascination. Because at that point, I had run... Um, in the neighborhood, I had run um, 26.2, the marathon distance. So, and I felt like, oh, maybe I have a little bit more in the tank. Gotcha. And so, so that what piqued kind of, my interest. Yeah. So, what kind of training is involved with running such a an elaborate event like that? Well, I think building up the conditioning is really important. So, uh, after 2020, in 2020, in that summer, I was running. Um, up to 100 miles a week and so that built up a lot of my conditioning and at that point that brought me back to being at ideal weight again instead of being classified as uh, obese which was where I was at that point sure so after gaining that conditioning of doing 100 miles per week I really started to cut back because then as things opened back up in my business and job requirements came into play um, I would usually run about 49 50 miles per week um, leading up to um, the 100 miler so and that's still traditionally what I do in addition to I've added in more strength training this summer probably so 
So you work out seven days a week? Yes. Do you do more running? More? How often do you do weights and strength training? Well, I do that every day. So you I do, do it running every day and then I do some strength training every so day. So you do like two a days basically? Uh, like I work out twice a day, like the running, or you do it all at the same time? Uh, I've done it where I've split it up or I've done it all together. It depends on my schedule. Gotcha. So how long does it take for you to train? Like how long are you in the gym? Uh, well, it's that's gotten to be probably above what most average people would do, but um, running seven miles takes about an hour and then at least an hour of the weights. Oh, it's Could like be two longer. hours. Two hours, probably minimally. So Gotcha. Awesome. So did you have any concerns like going into your first 100 mile event? Well, I wasn't sure if I'd be able like, to finish be, it. Yeah, it was right? pretty, it was, it seems like a really big challenge. I mean, I felt like I was up to it, but there were concerns whether, like there was a lot of excitement, but there were a lot of nerves going into that. I had a lot of trouble sleeping leading up to the event well, sure. because I wasn't sure if I would oversleep the, the start time and then am I actually going to be able to finish this? Am I going to get injured? Am, you know, will I have some heart problem or, you know, there was, yeah. you know, there were a lot of different concerns, but I really wanted to try and see what would happen. Sure, sure. So would it kind of be an accurate statement to say that you didn't have a lot of trust or faith in your body's ability to perform in that first event? Well, in the first to, one... To be able to finish. I felt like I would be able to finish. I mean, I was nervous to a degree. I did believe that I would finish. However... Um, I mean, because I hadn't done it. I think that was one of the... Yeah, yeah. That was it's all the, new. It was all new. So yeah. because of that, there were doubts. There were a lot of doubts. But sure. I think overall going into it, I believe that I would be able to finish it. But I did have a lot of fears and doubts about whether sure. I could. And what kind of a track was it? Like, was it a course, like a marathon course or like... Oh, so on the, the first, first one, one... This first one was... Uh, it was a 5K loop. So we... Uh, and it was in an urban area, and that's actually what kind of appealed to me in choosing that particular race when that popped up on my Facebook while I was lying in bed. Yeah. And it sounded like, oh, that'll be a great, that'll be an easier, not easy, but it just felt like, oh, that'll be an exciting experience. Sure. Um, it was a, a 5K where you would go, um, you'd go in one direction about 1.6 miles, and then you would turn around and go back. Okay, gotcha. So that has pluses and minuses. It was in an urban area, so uh, we didn't have to worry too much about um, animals or darkness. You know, it was pretty well lit throughout the night, and um, then you also knew the core. So once you did, once you did sure. your first lap, yeah, there's no surprises. Yeah, yeah. But we did have to do 32 laps, and so sure. There's not necessarily any new scenery really on the course. Yeah. So some people don't like loops because they feel like they're, you know, tra and I joked about it while I was finishing it with some people that it was like a, a trap that I was trying to get out yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm in a loop. Yeah. Get me out of this. And what was your time after that first event? Uh, for the first event, I finished with about, uh, it was 10 minutes and 59 seconds left in the 30 hour cutoff. So it was 29 oh, hours. So they gave you 30 hours to complete. We had 30 complete. hours to complete, and I finished in 29 hours, 49 minutes, and one second. Nice. Just under the mark. Just under the mark. Yes. So, how did your body perform that? What kind of did you sustain any injuries during the first event? I did not have injuries, but I swelled like crazy and blistered like crazy on my feet. And um, it was it was really challenging. Once I got to around mile sixty three, I really wanted to stop, and I was slowing down. And it looked like my time. It looked like with my pace that I wouldn't be able to finish the race. Sure. Uh, there was actually a volunteer that helped me. Um, that brought me some food and kind of gave me a pep talk to help sure. revive me. And then one of my friends that I knew that lived in the area had mentioned uh, that she would, uh, you can have on these races pacers, which are people that uh, walk or, you know, run next to you. 
and kind of help sustain you mentally and give you some social energy. Sure. And she had mentioned that she was open to doing that, but she wasn't planning on doing almost a marathon of that nature, which she did complete. So that yeah. she's one of my big uh, race angels, and I think that oh, was nice. one of the reasons why I was able to finish that race was well, because sure. friends and volunteers that really were supportive. Sure. And the community when you do ultra races, uh, because you're on the course for so long, you talk to, you get to know almost everyone on the course. Some people are not necessarily, there are a few people that prefer not to socialize, but most people, I would say 95% of other participants are curious about each other. Sure. And yeah. You're around each other so long that you talk to yeah, each yeah. other a bit. And just to give you guys an example, I'm going to throw a picture up on here of what Matt's legs look like normally when he's not running a 100-mile event. And this is what it looks like here. But then also, too, I have a couple of pictures showing what he's talking about with this swelling that I'll sh put up on the screen right now as well. So you can get an example of and an idea of what kind of swelling really happened into these events. So in your first event, it started swelling around mile 63, 64. Right, 62, 63, 64, somewhere around there. Gotcha. Yep. And then what was the kind of the recovery after the event? <laughs> oh gosh. So there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of adrenaline and then also uh, the endorphins that carried me through that race. Sure. Um, once... Once I got through that, hump, once I got through the hump and kind of restarted after being kind of in that, where I was really considering uh, when the swelling and so on really got bad, I was really considering quitting at that point. Uh, but after getting back in the game and having you know my friends and the volunteers support me, uh, I was able to finish, and that was endorphins and adrenaline that carried through. And basically, right after that race, I did not want to walk anymore. Um, and I had to get back to my Airbnb. And essentially, I mean, I needed tons of sleep. It was oh, difficult. Sure. It was difficult to even go from the bed. In, and people, there was actually, when my friend drove me back to my Airbnb, and some of the neighbors of the Airbnb, I looked so trashed. They actually, there were two guys that helped me get into the Airbnb like up the stairs and into the bed and one of the ladies that was a neighbor um, was a nurse and she's like do you need to go to the er like are you okay because yeah. i looked so trash well sure and we were like no i'm fine um uh, and i just needed to sleep and i slept and it was hard like getting up i couldn't i didn't it was difficult to stand up on my feet so I dragged myself, I got out of the bed and like kind of slid over to the shower because I knew I needed a shower and put sure. Epsom salts. So uh, it took about, I took the week off and I very like gingerly recovered from, um, from that. I still believe in active recovery. So I still went several miles the next day, but they were very slow. What do you mean you went several miles? Like you walked several miles the next day? Well, I did a very slow run the next day, but it was okay. very slow, 5K, and it was very ginger, and basically, I mean, I rested most of the yeah. day to charge up. So that. how long did it take for your legs and the swelling in your feet to go down? I would say that was about a week. A week it took to do that? Yep. Okay, gotcha. So then what happened in the second event? So well, so the second event, in between, I had met you, and we started working together, and I think we had, was it a month before? Yeah, like three or four weeks, because you, you started it was three on... three and a half or something. Yeah, because you're the second event was, what, July 31st? It was. And you started Care With Me on July 8th, so whatever that was, about three, three and a half weeks maybe. So we started getting chiropractic care three and a half weeks out, and how did that second event go? Was it the same kind of a track or was it a different course? So it was a different course. This one was where you started in Illinois and then you went up 35 miles into Wisconsin, went back down to where you started and then went back up about 30 miles. So this was more of a trail. Okay. Uh, and so what's nice about that is the trail is more forgiving versus sidewalk. Sure. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> like a sidewalk yeah. concrete. Where, yeah. Especially, you hard, wouldn't right? think, <laughs> when I first started running, people would talk about different surfaces, and I didn't understand what they were talking about. But when you go 100 miles on a surface, it really drives the point home. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> but uh, that race, so that race was interesting because I was able to go further without the swelling. So I went about 70 miles, I would say. And then that's when the swelling and the blistering started. And because it was my second race, there wasn't as much... Like, I knew I would finish. We also had six more hours than the original race. Oh, so they gave you 36 hours? So we had 36 hours because it was a trail. Yeah. So I knew I would finish. Like, there was no doubt about finishing. But um, I would say when the swelling did come, it was a lot more psychologically and emotionally uh, challenging because my body was like, do you see what you're doing to us? And there was no longer, in the first one, there was kind of that time deadline of like, and then there was also, you know, it's my first time. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to finish this. And so there was that, there was a little more drive on the first one. And there was a, the clock was ticking a lot faster than in this one. So, um, I would say, I mean, physically the performance was going better, but my body was also really like, why are you doing this to us again? Yeah. So uh, performance-wise, uh, it was the time was worse. Uh, so it was 32 hours, 46 minutes, and 29 seconds. So I still finished with quite a bit to spare, but the time was the time was a lot longer. It was a lot ar- more arduous to finish that course. Sure. I remember there were some marathon people going by me. This one guy said, you're doing great. You're such an inspiration. And my response, because I was, I was around mile 90 at that point. And my response to him was, no, I'm not inspirational. I was like, I'm <laughs> stupid. <laughs> because, because what I meant was, you know, yeah. they, my body was like, I just felt yeah. like, why am I doing this yeah. to myself at yeah. this point? Um, because it was just that realizing the physical strain of sure. what I was doing. Well, I'm, and this was less than two months from your first event, right? That's true. So, so your first event was on June 5th, and this one was on July 31st last It was year. also something that so, I had added on, I think, at the beginning of July. Sure. So I hadn't... It wasn't originally on the plan. But I think what what made it difficult was that I thought, oh, I finished the other one. Now I'm going to do... A lot better on this one and yeah. then it I was still running into many of the same challenges gotcha. it went it went longer however the time took a lot longer but my recovery time was exponentially better so in this one I slept in my car for a couple of hours drove back to Wisconsin and then worked the next day and uh, I mean there was still several days there was still swelling um, in the recovery period, but it only took, I would say it took probably three or four days for it to go down. And the swelling on the, on the day after, I mean, the swelling was significantly reduced. Um, I did again, do some active recovery. Well, sure. And I was able to, that it was, it went a lot more smoothly than the first time. Gotcha. However, I did, I was really questioning, I still had a marathon and a half marathon, but I was really questioning whether I would ever want to do 100 milers again. And I did joke in my running group that I was retiring from those. (laughs) Well, hey, I mean, just finishing one, I mean, nine years ago, I did a Tough mutter. you know, uh, as my biggest and longest event you know 10 miles 22 obstacles and that was more of like a glorified workout you know and I was tired afterwards too but it's like yeah it's like you do an event like that it's like how much punishment do you really want (laughs) you know (laughs) right and then once you've done one yeah exactly then you completed it so perhaps next one's no big deal yeah exactly right you think you train smarter your body gets better conditioned and you know it's like oh piece of cake so 
So then fast forward to this year, you signed up for doing 200 milers this year. So I repeated the courses that I did. I repeated the races from last year. Gotcha. Um, but this year, you had a year's worth of chiropractic care I under did. your belt. You also did some enzyme work and some supplementation. Right. Talked about Juice Plus and giving your body the right support nutritionally as well as mechanically. So last year, did you have any other physical support uh, that you had done with your training besides like the chiropractic care, like the three and a half weeks before your second event? Did you have anybody else like working with you? Not really. And that was okay. my nutrition got was much better in the second race. But uh, as far as the food that we're eating, because when you do these races, they do provide, you know, you do take a break to go to the bathroom. Yeah, sure. You do eat food. <laughs> you do drink water. Well, yeah. Some people have asked me, do you have to keep moving every single moment? And I said, well, do you think we're going to die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, as far as other supplementation or other support, no, there was not any other mechanism. Gotcha. So the one you did this year was on June 4th. That's right. And how was your performance on that event with the year's worth of support nutritionally and mechanically with your body? So physically it went really, really well. Uh, I didn't start swelling until around mile, I want to say around mile 90. And it wasn't, it wasn't really, I mean, it wasn't that significant so that was when that started showing up around mile 90 with at that point I mean 10 miles is still substantial sure however mile 62 63 mile 70 those are you know 30 plus yeah. miles so for me at that point I felt like wow this is I can do this. This is yeah. going to get done. And I, I did finish uh, that race in 28 hours and about 26 minutes. Oh, wow. So that was, and that was the 29.49 um, was what it was previously. Uh, that was an interesting race because I was somewhat mentally tired because I had just finished uh, the week before there was finals and then there was a little bit of logistics drama getting to that race. But physically, my performance was great. Um, so mentally, I was a little, I was really tired. And there were a couple points that I did want to quit. And I think I've just kind of accepted any time that I'm doing a race, there is going to be some element, a hundred miler, there's going to be some element of me that wants to not continue. But uh, that voice has become much more quiet, or not yeah. as loud sure. as other races. Sure, sure. Uh, so you perform better. So what? Well, let's get into that after this one. So then you did that one on June fourth, and then the second one or your fourth one you did this year was on July thirtieth. Yeah. And how did that race go? That one went even better. So I finished in twenty seven hours and about thirteen minutes, a little under thirteen minutes. And did and you it was actually longer. <laughs> and that was the trail course. And there was actually that trail course in 2021, there was a detour which added a hill, a hilly area to it. And then there have been additional detours that were added that added even more hills. So what's interesting about that is that the distance is probably more around 106, 100, it could even be up to 108. So uh, I did much better on that course and it was technically significantly longer yeah. than the other courses. Well, six miles or eight miles, yeah, it's definitely... And hills. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So was there any swelling in this one? That was... The swelling was very, very minimal in the race, I think. It was pretty similar to the Indy Piston where it was... Yeah. post 90 miles and actually when I was running so that was the race where the marathon person had said oh you're inspirational and I said oh no I'm stupid to be doing yeah. this to myself again yeah. and this this time in the day um, when the marathoners and the 50k the shorter distance um, races not to diminish those races but the races that were less um, 
less mileage when they when those runners were out i was actually able to be running at that point so whereas i was limping along the year before so my performance was much better and also i was much more mentally checked in on this race as gotcha. well and we have a picture of because the races started on saturday morning they do and you finish on sunday so this picture i'm going to throw up on the screen now was monday uh, the day after this race, and you can see that there is significantly less swelling in this race as compared to the other ones. Uh, I'll kind of put a comparison of those pictures up there. So, so what do you attribute this performance and the decrease in swelling and decrease in recovery to? I think there is an element of conditioning, but then even more importantly, I think the chiropractic care uh, has really strengthened my body as well as uh, the enzyme protocols. Yeah. I know that even though we had worked together for three and a half weeks, which is a relatively short period between the first and the second race in 2021, in that second race, I did not have an enzyme protocol for that race. And I think that was a huge difference in both of the races yeah. this year. Yeah, because this year with these two races, race three and four, we actually had a specific supplemental regimen he took during the race that included Juice Plus. Right. It included uh, enzymes to help with the inflammation, the trauma, um, and also protein and fatty acid supplements to give his, to nourish his body so that it's able to perform. Because I mean, running a hundred miles, I mean, that's no small small feat. Right. right, and it's very, very taxing on the body, not it only is. physically but also mentally. And you're just burning like all that energy and those nutrients. So when you supplement the body in the way that it needs to be supplemented, it will do its job and it will perform with significantly less swelling and better performance. You know, 106, 108 miles in, you know, 27 hours. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. You know, in such a good way. So that's awesome. That's awesome. And that's also why I wanted to say too is that this is why, you know, a lot of top athletes utilize chiropractic care. I mean, chiropractic is all over the Olympics. You know, Usain Bolt gets adjusted. A lot of top athletes in other sports, you know, Barry Bonds, Michael Jordan, Derek Rose, John Stockton, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Evander Holyfield. Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Emmett Smith, they all utilize chiropractic care to give them that competitive edge because athletes know their body extremely well. And when you're getting adjusted regularly with performance, because, you know, anytime you're active, you get injured. I mean, that's how I actually got involved in becoming a chiropractor. So when you're active and you get injured, you know, it's good to have a chiropractor there to help get you back into shape and your body performing optimally. So uh, it's great. It's great. Absolutely. I think that uh, the chiropractic care has really been very helpful. And what I really appreciate about the care is uh, the education beyond just the adjustment so mm. learning more about how to have better posture and, <laughs> uh, and you know, move my body more intentionally and be more in touch with my body has really helped me athletically. And then the component that I think is a really big game changer as well that you bring to the table, Dr. Keith, is the nutritional element. And um, I think that's been, that was, that's been very profound just that inflammation and the blistering, uh, having the right ends, giving my body what it needs in order to process the stress has yeah. really just made a big difference for me. And that was where in the second race, after that second race, I really was thinking like, wow, maybe why do I really want to put my body through this stress? Um, but then, you know, I had some other races and I still had, I mean, I, there there are a lot of ups and downs when you do these races, and the ups are really incredible. So I did want to do more, and I have friends, so I wanted to do more, but I was really concerned about whether I should and whether, and I know some people might think that that's not the case, but these were things that were going through my mind, and I we were talking about that. Yeah. And then 
some other, uh, I do also have a massage therapist and an energy healer that everyone on that, on the team kind of gives me different inform gives me different feedback. And then I use that feedback in my training. And, uh, it's, I think having the team and having the information and the education from you has really made, made a really big difference. And I don't think that, I don't think I could be seeing the success that I've seen without that. So. Yeah. So would you say that after having a year's worth of care and enzyme nutrition and juice plus that you were more confident in your body, you were more trusting your body that you could actually do it in a better time? I was. With the education and everything? I was. And then particularly after the third race, when I saw that the the swelling wasn't happening till towards the end of the you know the last 10 yeah. percent of the race that was very exciting yeah. especially because one of my big goals my big hairy audacious goals is to be able to complete a hundred miler in under 24 hours so uh that was really really encouraging towards that end so you're going to be doing some next year then Yes, I will be. <laughs> I will be doing a hundred milers okay. next year. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, I just wanted to kind of wrap this up here a little bit and hope this was kind of uh, inspirational for you. But the bottom line is, is that when it comes to your health, exercise has to be a component of that. If you want to have a wellness lifestyle, chiropractic care has to be part of that. So it's, it's not, you don't have to get out and run 100 miles. You can do any kind of exercise that works for you. I mean, I have a lot of my patients that ask me all the time, like, what's the best exercise to do? And I'm like, well, the one that you're going to do. You know, if you don't like running, don't run. If swimming is more your thing or playing tennis or basketball, then go do that. Bike riding, whatever it is, yoga. So just get up and move because that is important when it comes to one's health. And chiropractic care just keeps you functioning optimally and keeping your brain, your spine, your nervous system working in top shape so that it can adapt easily to all the stresses that incur in doing an event like that. So any other closing remarks, Matt? I definitely think that everyone um, should strive to regularly and consistently move their body in some way. Uh, and... I just want to emphasize again how out of shape and I was and over the over the couple of years just I started really small and so I know we're talking about the hundred milers but I started very small and I couldn't even run down the block when I first tried to run which was after several weeks of walking and then I gradually you know built in more runs and more walks so I think start really small um, and move regularly. If your goal is to increase your movement fitness, I would really recommend that you start small, set up easy wins for yourself, and then gradually expand that as you go. And as Dr. Keith said, we're not trying to say that you need to run. We're not trying to say you need to run 100 <laughs> miles. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would say just starting small is going to be really important to continuing to live the best life and the wellest life that you can. Yeah. And that's really what it's about. So throw a comment down below. Uh, tell us something that you liked about this video, this content, this story. Uh, but also too, mention something that you're working on. I know with me and one of the things that Matt just said that I'm striving on is the word consistent. Because I'll exercise here, I'll exercise there, but my consistency could be a lot better. And that's one thing that I'm working on. So throw a comment, a comment down below and uh, great to, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.